here? We should be here. I should be here. I'm not sure if I'm here, but uh, I should be here right now. And hopefully, hopefully you see me and you are joining us for it is Tuesday Night Live again. And I really have a great show lined up. This is going to be a lot of fun. We might get a short visit from Kathy today by request. Todd Hartpence has requested a visit. My bar is very messy tonight. I apologize. A lot of stuff on my bar. I have this apparent, uh, I don't know what this is. It's some type of syringe that we use to give uh, animals some type of, like, I don't know, tranquilizer. Maybe we in artificially, I don't know what we do with that. But I do know that uh, my bar is messy and I apologize. But I have a great show. We lined up some great old school pictures to tell some fast stories. Every week now, the thing's going to get better. It's going to get better because we have more toys to play with. And I'm going to go online right now and see uh, if, we're, if we're getting some views right away. If you're joining us uh, anywhere but the Stress Factory Facebook page, jump over to the Stress Factory Facebook page, if you wouldn't mind, because that's where we like to coagulate. We want to coagulate all the viewers in one spot. Soon, very soon, you will not see the Tuesday Night Live anywhere but the Stress Factory Facebook page page. So I'm listening now. I'm looking online to see if I have people tuning in and commenting and all the other happy crap. So already we have Mark Plowden saying hi. Ryan Ginsburg here who just celebrated a birthday at the Cup Tot Heart Pence who may or may not have made the cast request. Phil Manz is saying hello already. Lee Chikanian sending stars. Lee, one of our regular regulars, just came to our VIP party. Had a great time. Uh, Denise, of course, hello. We're waiting for Jan Derricks. Patricia Cardinale, I'm going to say that name is Cardinale, checking in. Anyone else, if you're somewhere else and I haven't said your name, that's because you're on the wrong location. I want you on the Stress Factory Facebook page. And this is the last week. Hello, Sandy, Danielle. This is the last week that we will not have a podcast that's pre-recorded and also put up on Stress Factory Live. Roxanne Friera, how are you? Uh, Mary Beth Clark, hello. Lisa McHale, hello, Lisa McHale. And, uh, and so we have a good crew in already. And, uh, but what a show we have. I have some photographs that no one has seen that are going up tonight. And nobody has seen these shots. That's what makes it so interesting. And the little story that'll go behind those shots that's fun. Hello, Larry. How are you? We are waiting. Uh, we are waiting for Vicky uh, to get into some of these photographs because Vicky is instrumental in some of these shots. By the way, if anyone, you see the little message that popped up tonight, you will laugh hard at our soccer team name. I put that message up literally in the spring and I saved it somewhere and I can't unset that. I've had all kinds of Facebook people looking at it, trying to figure it out. No one can figure it out. If you know how to do it and you fix it for me, I will give you the brand new Stress Factory travel mug, the 30-year travel mug. But it, listen, if you tell me how to fix it and I fix it, I, it I'm not sending the mug out till next week until I know that stupid message has changed. Hi, Corey. Corey, shoot. Denise sending 100 stars. Thank you very much. Mary Beth. Uh, hello, how are you? And any questions we have before we jump in tonight? Vicky's running a little behind schedule because she has the unfortunate job of picking up a bunch of kids from soccer and bringing them back here uh, for our night. So she's a little bit a little bit behind, but she'll be here momentarily. Wait till you see some of these photographs. I went in. Some of them go back as far as 2006. I have older ones that we'll have for next week, go back as early as 1995. Comedians that played the club, stories behind them, gonna be a lot of fun tonight, it'll be fun too. So uh, Phil Manta, I use my old school white and red Stress Factory mug every Tuesday AM. I love that, Phil. Where do you see the new travel mug? The new travel mug has a 30 year logo on it. What a fun ride it's been, uh, 30 years. What a fun, fun ride. Uh, you know, yesterday, I took my little one 
I don't know if I should say this in case the school is watching. I took my little one out of school. We lost Columbus Day. As a country, we lost it. It's no longer Columbus Day. It's now Indigenous Peoples Day. Whatever you want to call the day, we lost the day off here in Middletown because we had a mold issue, not the brands. The Middletown Township School District had a mold issue, issue and we started late in school. So we had planned to go to Great Adventure uh, on Monday, uh, October 11th. And the school district took that day away from us. So we figured out that we should just play hooky for a day. And parents are afraid to say that. Everyone's afraid to say when you play hooky. I am not. Because if you're a school teacher in Middletown Township watching this right now, I applaud you. But shouldn't you be great in a paper or some damn thing? Uh, so we played hooky. We went to Great Adventure for the beginning of Fright Fest. Great Adventure is not Disney World. But it isn't bad. It isn't bad at all. What happened at Great Adventure is that they made the, the year pass. I'm, I shouldn't even say this because I don't want any more of you to buy the pass. But it's like 70 bucks, And you get the rest of this year, which is through January. And then you get all of next year through to January of 23. Un, unrestricted admission. And every time you go, you get a sandwich and a beverage and a snack, which is why I'm fat today, because I ate all of it for $68 or some ridiculous number. I am going to personally bruise the living snot out of Great Adventure, all right? I'm gonna go there all the time because it's not that far from my house and it, it was a pretty good day. I went on the Jersey Devil roller coaster. That is the greatest roller coaster in the history of roller coasters, the Jersey Devil is the real deal. I almost shot myself on the Jersey Devil. I didn't, but it was, what a ride. I don't know how fast you're going, but it, you are motoring. And you know how most roller coasters have people next to you? So you can have people that are, yeah, Denise got the food pass too. Yes, Denise, way to rock and roll with that. So most roller coasters, you're next to people and you can dig your claws into them on the Jersey Devil. It's you, you're by yourself. It's you and the person in front of you and the person behind you. It's a single seat. I tell you something. I've never done that before. I loved it. In front of me was my little one, Cassie, who should have been in school, but we hooked her out. And uh, Cassie was terrified getting up to that roller coaster. Terrified, but she did it. She also did Bizarro, which is a good roller coaster, but it rattles the living snot out of your brain. I'm getting older, and I'm bizarre the whole time. It's a, it's a rattler, right? And the whole time, instead of enjoying the ride, this was going through my head. This can't be healthy. That's what I kept thinking. I'm rattling my brain. I'm going to have shaken adult syndrome. That's what I'm afraid of. <clears throat> if a child can get shaken a child syndrome, surely an adult can get that too. And I'm bizarre. I'm like, I'm going to walk off this thing senile. And so I woke up today and I'm like, oh my God, my back. I have shaken back syndrome. Everything hurt. But man, what a fun day. And, and I'm going to play some more hooky. I'm going to play some more hooky. I'm taking my kids skiing this year. All bets are off in the brand household because you got to live your life. Uh, you got to live your life. Lisa McHale, Janine. I'm, I'm saying hi to some of you. I, I, I missed you before. Dave, I've, I, 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 Cavone, I can never say that. I can never say it. Uh, but in any event, uh, hello to all of you. Any questions before? Oh, yeah, Marianne, my little girl is a cutie. She really is. Pauline Usia, Mike Smith, how are you? Uh, any other questions before we get into this? I don't know where the hell Vicky is. I called her over 25 minutes ago to tell her we're going to start. I want to I tell you something about the photographs. All right. And we talk a lot in our house about whether or not I should be more woke. And I'm very, very woke. I don't care what anybody does. I think that's the true definition of woke. I don't harbor any prejudices against or in favor of any other human being. All right? Uh, and I do, I do not like Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens because he's a raven. He's a raven. But last night I'm watching the game and I'm like, this guy's amazing. 
So I kind of like them now, even though I wish he would be traded to a team I like more, Giants. Uh, so back to what I'm saying, Vicky's always accusing me of not being woke enough. I'm going to show you a photo in a few moments that destroys the entire woke movement. It, it takes the argument, shakes it like my brain on Bizarro, and dumps it on the pavement. I have one photograph that's going to prove to everybody that you don't have to be over woke. I'm going to show the photograph in a few minutes when Vicky gets here because I wanted to see it. Because here's the thing. The woke argument says that we're all equal, which we are in that one sense, but we're not equal in other senses, right? Like I should not play in the NBA because I'm five foot nine. I'm five foot nine. And I, oh, I hear Vicky coming home. So I shouldn't play. So I'm not equal. You can't make everybody be everything. And this one photograph will prove that. Vicky's going to be here in a minute and we're going to talk about it. We're going to break into this conversation quickly and then we're going to get into some stories quick because I've got about seven photographs that I want to show you and tell you a short story about uh, for history of the club. It's really, really fun. Any questions before we dive into this? Uh, I'm going to say hi to some more. Steve Pizza, how you doing? Pizza, it's okay. October as, uh, it, it's ask, it's ask. October, as per our friend Tom Kelly, I tell him to go on Jersey Devil with me. Can you come to me? Yes, I will absolutely go, Maryam. I will go on Jersey Devil with you. Todd Harpence, uh, yes. Pump in ice cream. Let's do it quick. Uh, live your life. That's what I'm talking about. Hi, Lisa Ann. Anyone else comment here that, that I didn't answer yet? If you're watching somewhere else, jump over here and join us here at the Stress Factory page. By the way, I added... Vicky and I added a couple of very cool things. The date night special is back. Two admissions with two dinners, $49. You, okay, that's ridiculous. I go to the movies every now and again, and it costs me about 80 bucks for crappy popcorn, a movie that's going to be on HBO literally when I get home, and a, a soda that may or may not be real Coke. Come to the club for date night. This week, it's Rodney Laney. I'm doing Thursday in Bridgeport. I'm doing Thursday in Bridgeport because I got a lot of shit that I want to talk about. So 49 bucks a date night special will be a lot of nights. Obviously, we can't do it on special attractions, but it will be a lot of nights. So you want to be there for date night. $49, two admissions. You can get yourself two hamburgers, two admissions. See the show. All right, awesome. Also, at both clubs now, pumpkin Italian ice, drizzled with rum. If that doesn't give you a reason to throw your life away, I don't think anything will. All right, now, I don't know where Vicky is. Oh, we got a, we got a That's Great. I hope you're talking about our, our date night. Uh, yeah, Lizanne, that is a great deal, right? And, and, you know, the date night thing, too. You need to date... Uh, this is a completely different... You need to date your spouse. A lot of you people ask me, Vinny, how do you make your marriage work? How do you put up with Vicky? A lot of you ask me that. A lot of you. I don't want Vicky to hear that part. A lot of you say, how do you put up with that bullshit? And I'm going to tell you how I do it. I date Vicky. I take her out. Sometimes I, I give her a little pinch on the behind. She'd be mad if I said that, if she was sitting here. But you see, I let her know that I still am into her. So I take her out. We do date night. I get a couple glasses of wine. I pinch her butt. Come home light the candles, turn all the lights down, and she goes to sleep. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, <laughs> you got a date night special here at the club. Yeah, Denise, the date night ideal, it's the, it's the killer thing. And, and date, your, date your spouse. And you women, date your boyfriend, or your husband, rather. Remember those days when you spent seven hours fixing your hair and your makeup was just right and your toenails were painted? Now you're married. Your toenails were painted eight weeks ago, so what you really see is just the paint at the end of the toenail. You see the rest of the nasty, natural toenail just growing out, and you see paint at the very end, all chipped up. Your toenails are long. You catch a mouse with them. Listen, date your boyfriend or husband. Take care of your boyfriend or husband. Date them the same way I tell the guys to date the girls. You got to do that. Vicky! Come on, Vic. You got to get down here. She makes me crazy. She makes me crazy. We have one appointment every Tuesday night 
and she's always very, very late. I called her at 10 to 8. She was literally a quarter mile from our house, and now it's quarter after 8. I don't want to think she got lost, but maybe she did. Vic! Making me crazy. All right. So I think we've covered a lot here right now. Let's get back into where we are on the picture. This is the photograph I want to tell you about that Vicky took. This photo is what will destroy the woke argument. I'm trying to find it right now so I can play it for you. Uh, <clears throat> this will destroy the woke argument. And again, it's not that I think people aren't equal. That's not the point. The point is that there is some issues and you must not be, um, you must not be immune to the truth. You must know the truth. I'm going to call Vicky right now because she's making me crazy. And I want to get started and she's very, very late. And I can't start without her. Hang on one second while I call her. She's on my phone now. <clears throat> I know she's upstairs. I heard her come home. You know, she always tells me, she always tells me, I want to, I want to do different things. I go, okay, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, you're going to be there with me at 8 o'clock on Tuesday. And that will be a thing we do every single week. Why are you so late? Because I had a, we had a snafu, but I'm here. That's no, no, no. Wait, listen to me. Listen to me. First of all, I want you to know something. All right. I, oh, she needs the beer right away. She needs the beer. Comes in late, grabs a beer. Listen to me. I have a question for you. All right. I know you didn't leave right away. You, no, you didn't. They, I've driven from that house. Why did you not leave? We just, there was a snafu. And, and no, there's no snafu. Yes, what was the snafu? There was a snafu. A, another parent didn't pick their kid up? No. I know who you are. <laughs> and I'm calling you when we're done, okay? Listen, if I'm nice enough to drive your kid home, J, yeah, your first initials, J, God damn it, be on time. I have a live stream to do. I hope you're watching. I hope you're watching. I hope you know that I had to do this by myself. Oh, you are just fine. Huh? You are just fine. Of uh, what? You're just fine. Well, we're talking about something that we, that we didn't talk about last week. We're talking about the kind of my coffee, please. My beer is after my coffee. Oh, you're still drinking. First, I get, this is like my, this is the equivalent of my eight ball. Right. I do a coffee. I get all jazzed up. Mm -hmm. And I do a beer. It's, that's, I'm, it's. This is weird. We can't see who's on. What's that? This is weird. We can't see who's on. No, you know why? You know why it's not weird, Vicky? It's I not weird because weird. if you were here on time, uh, you would have seen that we can see. I just have to get two. This is where I was doing it. My eight pages, and I want to go to the Stress Factory page to see our live stream, and we can see it here. So, <clears throat> mm -hmm. anyway, so Vicky, we were talking last week about woke and the woke moment. Okay. And we didn't talk about. You saying you want to go away with your girlfriends, right? We, we didn't talk about it. No, we did not talk about it. Because Vicky said she's going away with her girlfriends mm -hmm. for her 40th birthday party. Mm -hmm. It may or may not be how old Vicky's turning, but she gets <laughs> mad at me for saying her actual age. I think she should be proud of her actual age. Because it's my business. Look, huh? My business. Yeah, when you're, listen, when you're 60 years old and you look this good, you should be mm -hmm. happy. <laughs> so, Vicky, it, you're, you said that. And I said that you should discuss with me right before you go away because that's a big thing to go away. I don't care you go away. But I mean, and you said, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just me and my girlfriends. And you're always telling me I need to be more woke. Is that true? I, I'm not telling you to be more woke. You I'm just always being, telling I'm, me to be more whatever. I'm telling you to be more sensitive and... That's woke. Not of other people. No, that's woke. You yeah. say, okay, for example... All right, if we're driving down the road mm -hmm. and I see an old person driving slow in front of us, right. I will say, you're a menace, get right. off the road. Yep. And you will say that that is aggressive and I shouldn't be aggressive like yes, that. Yes, because one day that's going to be you. No, I will never be a menace. Mm -hmm. I will never be a menace on the roadway. That is absolute truth. I believe that all my heart. I'll get my comments up in a minute. So Vicky said, I'm going to go away. With my girlfriend. Yeah. And in a way to test her, to see how woke Vicky really is, I said, okay, you're going away with your girlfriends? I'm going to go away with my boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And Vicky went like this. Oh, oh. That's... I did not. Yes, you you did. so full of shit. What did you say? What you did you say? You said, because we were with Lori when it happened, and you said, 
Well, you know, it's so weird because Vicky can say, I'm going away with my girlfriends, but I can't say, I'm going away with my boyfriends because it has a different meaning. Okay, can I? No, it doesn't. It has a different meaning in your head. No, it doesn't I didn't sound say right. I didn't say we're, word. Okay, if we're out with our friends and you're with your girlfriends and I'm with, we're all together and I say, hey, you know, I'm going to go fishing with my boyfriends. Go for it. No, it would absolutely. No. Uh, okay, you would, you would accept that. Yes, of course. Would you not think something? No. Would you? You wouldn't pull me aside and say say that differently. You would. I would just say, just I don't know. I don't make the societal say, rules, so it just sounds like when someone's. I, I don't know. I'm not gonna look at Vicky. I'm not getting into deep this. in her own no. horse shit. <laughs> I'm tired. There's a million things that we could be talking about. Okay, Vicky, do you believe that? Now, okay. This is going to be tough. Do you believe that the phrase, I'm going away with my boyfriends, would make you uncomfortable if you just heard me saying that in front of people you didn't know? Well, yes, because it would imply that you were gay. Why? I don't know. Vicky, first of all, you're going to, you're going to get yourself canceled on our own show. I'm going to, I, I want to apologize to our sponsors, KY Jelly, because... <laughs> I'm tired. I don't have time for your antics today. You have time for what? Your antics. <laughs> I am, I've been putting up with you all day. You yeah, asked me to come I'm downstairs in the, in the basement. Because Here I am. <laughs> I'm having a beer. I'd like to have a good time. And you're just bugging me. All right. So I said to them that I was going to show some old photographs. And I've loaded some old photographs up. But before we get into that, I wanted to take the task, the whole notion that men and women... Of course, we're equal in that women and men are equal, but we're not equal in what tasks we should be doing. Can you say that that's accurate? What do you mean? Huh? What do you okay, mean? I'm going to show you why. So I, I started today going through photographs of pictures of the club, things that we've seen over the years that I think you would be interested in seeing, maybe a little snippet, maybe someone famous, whatever, and I came across a picture that Vicky took. And it immediately occurred to me is that this is why women shouldn't handle equipment. All right? Because here's a photograph that Vicky took. Who is right? that? No one knows who that is. <laughs> no one knows. I don't know. Why do you assume I took it? Huh? Why do you assume I took okay, it? Okay, I know you took the picture because I went through all the photos of that day. And I have some of the photos of that day. And this is a photograph that you took. You took this photograph. And this is why women should not be allowed to operate equipment because you did that. And uh, <laughs> you did. how do you know I did it? I can see all the photographs you took. Okay, there's pictures like the one day we're, we're at a soccer game and I couldn't be at the game. So Vicky's at the game. I give her a video camera. I go, please record. And I'm on the phone with her and I go, go, Maddie, go, Maddie, go. go! Oh my God, Maddie scored. I get the video. It's a video of Maddie. As soon as she gets the ball, Vicky gets excited, puts the camera down, and now I see Vicky's feet as she's running along the sideline, right or wrong. Yeah. And then the goal is scored, and then the video stops. I don't see any of that. I just see Vicky's shoes running down the sideline. I was in the moment. Yeah, but a man wouldn't do that. I would not do that. It's not a man woman thing, it's a person thing. Vicky, that is a man woman no, thing. Not. And this is a photograph that you took. I don't even know who that person is. I know you don't. That's what makes this so funny. Why would I take a picture of a random man's head? I'm going to tell you who I think that is. Who? I think that might be George Tickler. Then you took that picture. No, 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 no. Nope. Head. That, I believe, is George Tickler. I could be wrong, because I don't know if George is that, that bald. But this photograph was taken at the backdrop. What's the backdrop? Do you see the backdrop? I know what the backdrop is. Is that wind in, the old wind and sea? Pardon? Is that the old wind and sea? Nope, you're close. Oh, Harbor Side? Nope. That is the old Driftwood Cabana Club. Uh, that was at a party we threw at Driftwood Cabana Club. Gotcha. You took that photograph. Now, oh, you know whose head that is? That is Paul's head. That is Paul's head. That's Paul Hughes. That's not my stepfather. You don't think so? That's definitely not my stepfather. Is it George? It looks like George. That's not my Could stepfather. Could be George, right? Yeah. We have another shot of George. We'll put it up in a little while. So 
I think that that blows up the whole men, women argument thing. And let's get into another photograph right now of an old school comic that we used to do at the club a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is the last time we worked there. This is John Panette. Mm -hmm. This is John Panette. And we worked with John Panette. We produced a show at the Count Basie, remember? Oh, right, right, right. With Lori. With Lori. You did not go to that show. Yes, I did. You went to the show? Yeah, I came on the heels of, I had just done the Avon Breast Cancer Walk. And I finished and I came right to the show. But how come I have no photographs of you that day? Now, the, I, I think you came too late to take photos then. This is a picture uh, backstage of me and John Panette. Yeah. Um, and you could take a look at the size of Panette. Now, I look big there. Uh, and Lori's on the far right. I look big there. If you look in the background, you will see uh, the green room setup. Now, I don't know what Panette's doing with his hand there. I don't know. You know what, Vicky? You took this photograph. I think you took this photo. Maybe you were there. Probably. I got to find the photos of you from that night. Probably. I was there because I literally came from the Avon Breast Cancer Walk, stopped home, showered, and went. Yeah. Did you shower? So here's the point. This is Panette working with us at the camp base. He's one of the last times I ever saw Panette. And... If you remember, we took him to dinner. I took him to dinner because you weren't there yet. No. At Bonacera. And Panette, who I loved, we go to Bonacera next to the Camp Basie. Show was sold out. And he orders uh, an appetizer and two entrees. And I order an entree. I had the salmon. He had everything else on the menu. And I'm saying that, um, and it sounds like I'm picking on him. I'm not. He just had a, a ton of food. Up in the green room, we had sandwiches and fruit mm -hmm. and vegetables. And then uh, when we finished dinner at Bonacera, mm -hmm. he said, I really like this. Would you get me a, a meal for after the show? Right. And I went up and did 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we left Bonacera, went to the green room. In the green room was all kinds of sandwiches. And I went to the green room, uh, or I went on stage. I did 30 minutes. When I came off stage, Panette had consumed all of the sandwiches mm -hmm. and left the fruit and the vegetables, right? And I saw him, oh my God, he ate this. Now we got him a dinner to go. Mm -hmm. He gets off stage, he eats that dinner. Then he eats all the fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then we get driven back to the hotel by our good friends, George and Beth, who are in this shot right here. This is George Tigelar and our good friend, Beth Tigelar, backstage. Uh, I think that's George's head in the photograph, by the way. I think it is George's head. I think it's George's head. It looks like George's forehead and his eyebrows. It looks like his eyes. And uh, right. it sounds I to me you're spending a lot I of time. I don't know why I can't get I it up. I can't get it up. Wait, I, I shouldn't say it that way. I don't know why I can't. It's <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. I don't have that problem. Uh, in any event, so what you see here is George and Beth backstage. And they drive us back to the Molly Pitcher Inn where Panette mm -hmm. is staying. Right. Now. Panette has just consumed three dinners, a bunch right. of sandwiches, all the fruit, all the vegetables. The dinner we got him from Buenos Aires afterward, and we're driving back, and he goes, can you stop at the 7-Eleven? Mm -hmm. And we pull in, and he goes and gets a box of Entenmann donuts, 12 donuts. Right. And I love John Panette. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> he's in the back of the car, and he goes, would you like a donut? Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, no, 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 and, and no one wanted to done it. And he goes, oh, thank God, I didn't get enough. And I'll um, never forget it because I said, oh, my God, this poor guy. That's is, sad. Huh? It's sad to have such an unhealthy relationship, you know, with food. I, I think that this is the problem with a lot of comics. They get on the road, you're lonely, something becomes your go-to. Right, your comfort. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Panette was a big drinker. I don't remember him being a drinker. I don't think he drank at all. I, I don't. I, he didn't drink that night. No. And I remember saying to you afterward, if he doesn't stop, he'll be dead. Yes. In, and it was, it was not a year later, right? It was a short time later. It was yeah. a very short time after that. Because it's Vicky very said. sad. Yeah, Vicky. It was very sad. And Vicky said, because I said, John Pett passed away. And she goes, oh, my God, did he, did he cash that check? I did oh. not say that, you liar. <laughs> you liar, liar, <laughs> pants are on fire. So... Uh, but it was a very short time after. But Panette was one of those very sweet guys who always killed on stage. Yeah. And we did him in the club over the years too, right? 
How many times do you think Panette did a clip? I don't remember. Panette murdered on stage. Yeah, he did. Oh, he we did murdered. Well. And the mm-hmm. Count Basie show was a lot of fun. The agent for the deal, my friend Nick, I won't say his last name, but Nick, if you're watching, you know it's you, <clears throat> got mad at me uh, and wouldn't let me do him again because mm-hmm. he thought that um, he didn't make enough money. Panette made plenty. We made plenty. The agent felt like he didn't make enough money, which right. I thought was odd because that wasn't even the gig. It didn't even matter, right? Uh, now, <clears throat> let's get to a shot that I love. This is a shot of Vicky that I took backstage with me when I was on my best diet ever. This is the thinnest I ever was. Uh, I looked. <laughs> <laughs> this, of course, is Gilbert Gottfried. Yes. Who, another absolute great guy, great friend. Yeah. Also hysterically funny and a little odd, right? He was very odd. He was. He very, is. He is. He's he, not dead. Yes, no, I know, but we haven't worked with him in quite some time. But I, I, I first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry if we're not responding to you. I can't get the comments up at all. I can't. We can't you said see that anything. So much better than I did. Um, I, I'm trying so hard so we can communicate with everybody, but it, it just, for whatever reason, it's just spinning and spinning. So we can't. Yeah, I'm sorry for not responding. But yeah. In, in this picture, this has got to be what. 14 years ago? Um, I bought that shirt at Urban <laughs> Outfitters. So <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how I remember things. Do you understand that I could never, <laughs> I can't get divorced. I can, she'll be a quirk on. I remember that day because that day <laughs> I had on my lucky sock. <laughs> I bought that sock at American Eagle. It was a two for one sock sale. I could never, you have an amazing memory. But, you know, I, 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 people think I'm too corny. You still look like that. It's no, amazing. That's very sweet of you. Too. Oh, Vicky, you look great. But, at- um, so that day, Gilbert wanted uh, a brownie bottom Sunday. And he was very, very flustered after the show because he really wanted a brownie bottom Sunday. And I said, okay, I'll get it for you. And he was very childlike. If I could say that, like, you could say that. And he was mm. like, "Well, where do I go now?" And I said, "Well, Gilbert, why don't you go sit in the green room?" And he said, "Where is my car picking me up?" And I said, "But he had an outside car. He didn't use the service set. He didn't we, use us. He didn't, he didn't, use, didn't our use our guy. service. He had his own service." And I said, "Why well, I don't I don't know, Gilbert? Where did you tell your car to pick you up?" <laughs> and he said, "I didn't tell him anything." And I said, "Okay, Gilbert." Can I have his number? And he said, I don't have it. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go walk the streets of New Brunswick <laughs> till I find your car. And he said, well, what about my Brown and Bottom Sunday? And I said, all right, I'll get you a Sunday first. Yep. You can eat your Sunday while I go hunt down your car. Yeah. And so I did. I literally walked around until I found a limo sitting there and I said are you Gilbert Godfrey's driver and he said yes and I said okay let's get let's get go pick up Gilbert now and he is when he talks he goes yes oh, okay mm-hmm. Wait, I don't know what I, like, I used to do a good Gilbert yeah but <clears throat> he literally gets lost and talks like a little child which he's a very bright guy yeah he's a little introverted he's very very funny yeah um, <clears throat> and he also has a idiosync idiosync it is some Chris Hades. I don't know. He's, yeah. he's weird. In that, <laughs> <laughs> in that, like, was it, hey, Gilbert, would you like a shirt? And he's oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would like a shirt. Yeah. And then he goes through the, the swag room, and we have, like, a box of pens. Right. And he says, can I have a pen? And, he, yeah, and he takes 30 pens. He takes shirts in all sizes. And you're like, Gilbert, do you know a bunch of triple X people? Because he takes everything. He, we, we pay him a lot, and the swag costs us even more. But a, a great guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one of my favorite jokes, after he got fired by Aflac, he oh, went yeah. on stage and he said, I got, you know, the Aflac people said I upset the people of Japan over the tsunami. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> he goes, I don't know who's clinging to a tree Saying, honey, quick, the 
tsunami is going to come and wipe us all out and kill everybody. Oh, hold on. Let me see what Gilbert Gottfried's saying on Twitter. <laughs> it was one of my favorite jokes. Uh, great guy. And one of our favorites come in. This yeah. is a shot of a guy who recently said, do you know the Chris Rock? Recently said the Stress Factory on Mark Maron's podcast. He said it's his favorite club to play. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know Chris that. Chris Rock uh, came in and did mm -hmm. a bunch of shows at the club. 18. Eight, well, he did it. Right. He, yes, yes, yes. He did a bunch of times. And he worked out his set for his HBO special. And I got to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Chris is a great guy. He is actually one of my favorite superstars because he came in, he met the whole staff, he talked to everyone, he talked to anyone that wanted to talk to him, he drove himself, no entourage, really just a lovely person. And he also let the club make a little bit of money. Right. He, he cut a deal where we could actually pay a bill or two. And now he still got paid a great amount of money. No, he did. He, but he also, if you remember, you know, there, there are some people, which I always say, like, the bigger the star, the smaller the entourage. Oh, sometimes. Yes. Because sometimes, like, you have a great, huge star, and they come in with such few people, and then you have these people that want to be great, huge stars. Yeah. And they have a ginormous entourage yeah. yeah and chris chris drives himself to the gig he drove himself he had no one there no one he there. just came in by himself but it i was... do want to tell the story of the last night that he was there okay with the with her with the range rover chris okay. comes in the last night and he parks his range rover right against the entrance of the club and we're doing two shows so i go in the green room and uh and by the way his first night his show was two hours and 20 minutes long He's getting ready to tape a special. And what he did over 18 shows is he cut that from two hours and 20 minutes. And every single show, the show got better. His work ethic is amazing. And he just kept cutting it down to where he got one hour. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, he takes some little suggestions. If you give him a line, he, he's not an ass about it. So the last night he's there, uh, his car is parked right against the door. I go in the green room. I go, hey, Chris. I go, uh. Your car's right against the green room, uh, right against the outside door. The second show <clears throat> is going to line up against that car. I'm worried they're going to do damage to it. Why don't you let me move the car? And he flips the keys to me, not in a rude way, but like in a, I don't give a shit who drives this car. If you don't mind moving it, thank you so much. He throws me the keys. Well, when he throws me the keys, I go outside, I get in the car, and I'm like, man, this isn't the same truck he had. This right. is a different truck. And I park it. And I'm like, this, this car smells brand new. I go in the green room and I go, Chris, I go, that's not the same car you had the other day. I go, what year is that car? Right. And, and he goes, today. Right. <laughs> and I go, today, what do you mean? He goes, ah, you know what they do, Vinny. I took my other one in to get work done. And then you know what they do? They keep you walking around that showroom. Mm -hmm. He goes, I see this one. And I said to the salesman, can I get this one before that one's done? And you know they know they're going to do it. <laughs> and he's so, I don't laugh at him. So I'm curious, and I go, Chris, I go, uh, if you don't mind me asking, I go, how much was the, the truck that you bought today? And he goes, you should know, you bought it. <laughs> 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 but in the nicest way possible. Yeah. I hope he comes back soon because he's a killer, as is Tony Rock. Yes. Uh, yeah, Tony Rock does really well at the club. Tony and Chris are And he's very, very nice. The staff loves very him. Very nice. They're both I, great. You know, I always gauge it by... Um, you know, people always ask me, Vicky, who's your favorite comic? Because, you know, we're around comedy so much. And for me, more, it's more of who's super nice, too. Not just who's super funny, who's right. on stage. Like, to me, it's like who's super nice. And the people that are, like, crazy nice to the staff. Like, Brewer comes in, and he's one of my favorite people because he's, like, giving everybody hugs and high fives and... You know, he's just talking to everybody. Brewer's great. And Brewer called us this morning mm -hmm. to check up on our on Tabby. Oh yeah, I heard you. He called to me him. at seven thirty yeah. this morning. Yeah. I thought he needed something. I'm like, hey, Brewer, right. what do you need? Dad, how's your daughter? Right. Just, yeah. Uh, it's been on right. my mind. Yeah. And then he said to me, I didn't tell you the whole conversation. He goes, it's been on my mind because you know I was there last week and I didn't get a chance to talk to you. 
And I just left, and it's been on my mind all week long. And she goes, I'm, I'm traveling home today. I wanted to call you. I'm like, it's, it's the That's greatest. so nice. See, he's so nice, so down to earth. His wife is lovely. His kids are lovely. Just a wonderful family. And that's why, like what I always say about like Chris Rock, he was so incredibly lovely yeah. when he came into the club. And so for me, it's anyone that sits and talks to the staff and like really... It's oh, just, the Jokers are great. The Jokers are great. The you know they said Vinnie Brand. Vinnie Brand is very number one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get big enough to blow you off. <laughs> uh, I will never be an ass, right? Nah. I like people. I don't know. Come on, <laughs> you know I like people. Now, not everybody is nice in a traditional way. Right. Right. Everybody, but this next guy. We loved, mm -hmm. absolutely loved. He's no longer with us. Right. But he was nice in a totally different way. Right. Because this guy, if he liked you, he would bust your balls mercilessly. Oh, yeah. Mercilessly. And he's one of the very few individuals that ever joined us at our very prestigious no longer going to happen. Pre-COVID Super Bowl party. Pre-COVID <laughs> Super Bowl party. Our Super Bowl parties are notorious. If you are a regular, regular, and we ever do it again, you might get an invite. This year, by the way, you know what I thought we could do? What? We could do the Super Bowl party in the tent in New Brunswick. Uh, it's a school night, so I don't know if I'll be there. Oh, my God. It's only a school <laughs> night if you send them to school. <laughs> Jesus. Everything's a school night if you're yeah, a big baby yeah. about it. This next guy came to a Super Bowl party. I don't know what year this is. Um, so that was, I want to say, Maddie and Tabby were little. I right, can just say this. If there was a shot of Vicky, she'd be able to look at what she's wearing. I shit you not. And she'd say, oh, that was 2007. <laughs> well, I think that's probably like 2006, 2007, because that's when James and Amir used to come. So, like, all my high school friends used to come before they had kids. Yeah. And remember, yeah. they would, like, crash in the living room down here. Yeah. And, you know, because they would take off the next day. But once they started getting, once they got married and had kids, um, they didn't do that anymore because we had kids before all yep. of them. And for those of you who don't know the name, that's Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. And Patrice O'Neill came to the Super Bowl party. Uh, I've invited... Bill Burr, Patrice O'Neill, Brewer. Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane. Voss, Bonnie, Keith. Keith. Mm -hmm. Cotters. Mm -hmm. We invited a bunch of Cotters can never make it because they're always upset because the Giants always beat uh, the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But Patrice came one year with uh, Keith. Keith Robinson. Yeah, Keith Robinson. And it was the first year that there were two black NFL head coaches in the Super Bowl. And it's the first year we had... Uh, anyone of color at our party. And not because it was just the way it worked out. Yeah. Right? Like now Chuck comes every year, yeah, although Chuck Corvus does not come. Corvus didn't come Corvus, on? No. Corvus, I don't think Corvus has come to Super Bowl. She came maybe one time. So now, of course, we've integrated our party uh, and everybody's here. Uh, but at that particular party, Patrice and Keith uh, come to the door and our friend Norm McDon uh, Norm. Um, Monk home, mm -hmm. answers the door and comes downstairs and he goes, oh my God, he goes, I just saw Patrice O'Neill and Keith Robinson at your door. Patrice is wearing a long black leather, leather coat. Leather jacket, yeah, yeah, And yeah. Keith's wearing a short leather jacket and Norm goes, oh man, he goes, I figured these are either friends of Vinny. No, he said, man, when I first saw him, I thought, oh man, either Vinny's having a refrigerator delivered or he's being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Which but, made me laugh. Right. Patrice's favorite joke. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. My favorite joke of Patrice is you got to do the joke. That was my favorite joke that great Patrice joke. always did. I loved that joke. Patrice O'Neill did a joke. Uh, he goes, you know, he goes, uh, everywhere I go, any, anytime I buy something, even if it's a pack of gum or something, because I buy, wherever I buy it, I get a receipt. You know, I, I want the time on the receipt. He goes, because as a black man, I have to have a lot of alibis. He goes, I, he goes, I, I, he goes oh, hang on now. You're, you're investigating a murder. Hang on. I was, I was buying a pack of gum. Here's my receipt. He goes, even if I'm walking through the park, he goes, like, and I finish a, a soda or something. He goes, I, a Coke. A Coca-Cola. He goes, I won't even throw the bottle. He goes, I won't litter. He goes, because, you know, 
I have to worry about that bottle landing in some dead white woman. Now I'm a Coca-Cola rapist. <laughs> he did it so funny. He was so funny. He was so funny. And that night hanging at the bar. Now he comes down, he hangs at the bar. Now you look at, at okay, now that's a mirror. Yeah, a mirror. And, and our friend James. And a friend James. And yeah. you don't get the benefit of knowing how many people are at this party. Yeah. This party is probably 130 people. Yep. All right. This is probably later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is later yeah. because the bar is thinned out somewhat. Yeah. Uh, this is before we built the thing in the back. That's this thing right here to our right. to our left. So, yeah, you're right. This is 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. And Patrice O'Neill is in the bar, and he's, he's, ah, he's, he's talking. And everyone can hear me. He's going, ah, I'll fucking be here with Vinny and all the Dick Cheney white motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 oh, Dick Cheney white motherfuckers at the party. I didn't. But with Patrice, too, remember? So Patrice um, came and went out to dinner with us one night. We went out uh, to Hula Hands. And then, home down. And home down. And he wanted advice from Vinny about a mortgage. He's going to buy his very first apartment. And first house. Well, condo. It, it was, oh, okay. Condo. Con, yeah, whatever. Right. And so we're at dinner. And... What did he say to you? How did he say? Like, he didn't understand what... Um, well, that was on the phone. But at right. dinner, at dinner, I ordered salad. Vicky ordered salad. Patrice orders a bunch of fried food. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's 5 o'clock at night. We're in the home down hula of hands. The place is very, very white. Very white. Very white. And Patrice is sitting back. He's got a chicken finger, a chicken uh, wing. Yeah. And he's eating it. And, you know, we were always concerned about Patrice's uh, diet. And I said... Well, because he had diabetes, too. Yeah. And he's a little overweight. Yeah. And he's eating, you know, all this fried food. And I go, Patrice, I go, why don't you have... Why don't you order something that isn't fried? Right. And he's sitting in his whole hands. He's like, he's got the hat on. I got the jacket. And he's eating. And he's like, well, it's the hat was that... It was a leather wide... A pimp hat. Brim hat. Right. Yes. Yeah. Big pimp hat, big Patrice O'Neill yeah. with a booming voice. Right. And he goes, hey, you know, fucking rabbit food, you white people. <laughs> <laughs> eating fucking rabbit food like some white woman. And he's eating a chicken finger, a chicken wing. And he's like, I ain't no fucking rabbit food like you white people eating salad and shit. And all you see around the whole, whole hand are well-to-do white women going, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that guy? And we just laughed and howled so hard. Right. And I'm not going to tell the mortgage story now. Or do you want me to? I think it's good because then I actually have to put Cassie to bed. Well, can Cassie around. make an appearance for Todd? Can she just come say hi for Todd? Uh, let and me, just let me finish yeah, the story. Finish the story. We're finished up. We'll get Daniel say hi. So this is what happens. Patrice needs advice on the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And we've been back and forth. He's talking to me back and forth about you know, how to get it, what, what type of loan he should get. Mm -hmm. He called me one day, like 2.30 in the afternoon, and he goes, uh, Vinny, uh, this, this fucking bitch banker <laughs> wants me to have equity. I don't know fucking equity. And I go, oh, actually, Patrice, I go, you know, you, equity's not a bad thing. I, I, don't, I don't want no fucking equity. This, this bitch wants me to have equity. He goes, you know, I don't, I don't want that, do I? And I go, well, Patrice, let me explain. You do want equity. Equity is a part of the house you own. And he goes, what do you mean? I own, whole, I own the whole fucking house, don't I? I go, okay, Patrice, you do own the whole house. But if there's a loan on the house, you don't own it free and clear. Equity is what you own free and clear. If you had to sell the home and you had 30% equity, you would keep 30% of the sale price. The rest would satisfy the loan. <clears throat> and I'm trying to explain it to him. And he's going, well, this bitch wants me to have like, 25% equity. Mm. And I'm going, Patrice, I got three, not that bad. I go, you know, if you can afford to do it, you know, and now we're talking about the LIBOR and, and how to, what, what he's going to base the loan on and what interest rate and everything. And he keeps saying things like, I don't know, this fucking bitch is confusing me. And I go, listen, Patrice, I go, just tell the woman that you'll want to put down 20%. I go, because honestly, if you can get that loan paid off quicker, it's not the worst thing in the world. I go, because you're putting money in your own account. I forget what interest rates were at the time. Yeah. They weren't crazy. 5% interest, whatever it was. And I go, but you know, you can pay it down and 
you know, you own more and keep more of your own money and use your money in other ways. And so I explained that all to him. And he goes, ah, hang on, hang on. He goes, you talk to her. And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, you talk to her. And he hands the phone and I hear a woman banker go, hello? And I go, oh my God. I go, I am so sorry. I go, I can't believe he's saying all that right in front of you. And she goes, oh no, no. I, I've been dealing with Mr. O'Neill now for a few weeks. I'm kind of used to it by now. And she goes, are you Mr. O'Neill's attorney? And I'm like, no, uh, I'm a comic too. And I own the comedy club in New Brunswick with my wife. And she's like, what? I go, yeah. I go, you know, I just, I've done this kind of thing a few times and I'm trying to get advice to him. I said, you know, I go, I'm really sorry that my friend was referring to you as this bitch. And she's like, no, no, it's, it's okay. Just trying to get the deal done. And I talked to her a few minutes. I go, can I talk to Patrice? And I get Patrice back and I go, Patrice, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you re refer to her as this bitch? And he goes, ah, she knows I don't mean nothing by it. This bitch is cool. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong? He got the house. Yeah, he did. All right, let me go get Cass Wait, Cass. Can we do one last one really quick? Because this is a really fun one. Okay. This All is right. a really last fun one. Last one for me because then I, she has to do a quick hello and then she's got to go to bed. Okay. Now, this is one of our all-time favorites. Very all-time favorites. One of our yeah. all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. And he happens to be coming up mm -hmm. in the club. Yep, soon. February. Mm -hmm. And and we were the first club to ever headline this comic. Did you know that? No, I didn't. We, it, we were the first ones to ever headline him. Mm -hmm. His agent called me up and said, I want right. this guy. And the agent knew. The agent said, this guy is really special. Right. He can be a big star. This is a very young, yeah. very thin Craig Robinson from the office, hot tub, time machine, pineapple express, pizza hut commercials, the mask singer. He is, he is, um, Doug Judy in, um, Brooklyn nine, nine. He's Judge Judy. Doug Judy. Oh, Doug Judy. Doug Judy. Brooklyn nine, nine. Um, in Brooklyn nine, nine. He, you know, Daryl from the office, obviously, but he is one of our all time favorites. He's also one of our daughter's all-time favorites. And one of the nicest guys. Oh, my God. So nice. I so just, nice. I texted him this picture earlier. Uh -huh. And I said, who is at my computer? And then I jokingly said, you're the one that downloaded those pictures. I fired a cook over that. Right. And he right away texts back. Now, what happened was, mm -hmm. and this is, this is uh, December 30. This is right before New Year's Eve. Really? Yeah, this is his second time in the club. Wow. And look how young he is. Then. Yeah. This is, uh, I'm going to tell you, this is 2005. Right, right, right. Two th no, it's 2006. That's 2006. Right. <clears throat> and so here we are now. We're 15 years later. Right. And his career has just kept going up and up and up. And he still comes and does the club. What, what a great guy. Now, he does I, New Year's Eve. Right. Well, wait one second before you go into New <laughs> Year's Eve. Um, during the height of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Everything's closed. Um, it was a very difficult time in our house during that, uh, which I'm sure everyone had difficulties. But um, we had some 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 really bad things happening at that time. And... Vinny reaches out to Craig because it is uh, two of our daughter's birthdays um, mm. during that time. And Craig, so graciously, on our one daughter's birthday, calls to wish our daughters a happy birthday. Yeah. And so gracious. And it lifted their spirits so much. Yeah. Like that call lifted their spirits. They were so happy. They still talk about it. They still talk about it. And mm -hmm. it was just, I mean, what an incredible person he is. Yeah. I bought her a car and we bought her a car. <laughs> <laughs> and she talks. Craig Robinson called me. Well, why don't you have Craig Robinson make those goddamn payments? Uh, here's yeah. a very rare shot on that same New Year's Eve. This, You know why this shot's rare? Why? Because in this shot, he's thin and I'm fat. <laughs> look at the shot yeah i look like a tank yeah and keep, he's thin and keep wait, talking about more. no no you keep talking about it. i'm gonna go get cast, just cast. one more 
Now, do you remember that New Year's Eve? Were you there that night? Yes, you were. I was there, but by the time, if you remember, back then, I would have Maddie and Tabby at the club because we used to have my stepmother watch the kids yeah. for New Year's Eve while we worked. And then Madison was in fourth grade. And so in fourth grade, she was, what, 10 at the time? Yeah. And, oh, no, she was nine. She was nine years old. <clears throat> and Tabby was six. And my stepmother used to have them go to bed before the ball dropped. And Madison had come home from school that year and said to me, hey, mom, people are talking about a big ball dropping from the sky <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> and it never occurred to us that she would never have know what it was. Never know what it was. Because we never talked about it because we always worked on New Year's We're Eve. We were always working. New Year's Eve was like a work night for us. It was never a night out for us. And it never occurred to us to have the conversation with Maddie and Tabby about what happened at Times Square. So she's listening to classmates and... And my stepmother never let them stay up. She always put yeah. them to bed. At 9 o'clock, let's get to sleep. Yeah. So... The year starts early. <laughs> so they had no concept. And so she came home, this wide-eyed nine-year-old, going, there's a ball that drops from the sky. Yeah. And so we started bringing the kids to the club. Yeah. And they would chill out in the back with headphones on so they couldn't hear the comic. Yeah. And then they would come out. And we so would when do New Year's on, we, yeah. and then I would take them back to the hotel. So when Craig was there, I had already gone back to the hotel when this was happening. When this happened, now Craig Robinson, a lot of comics get nervous on New Year's Eve, and the crowd's going to be rowdy. Our New Year's Eves in both clubs are just amazing. Oh, it's so much fun because we do dinner and yeah, the yeah. show, and then dancing afterward. And this year, of course, all the dancing will be six feet apart, but. Craig Robinson comes in, and everybody's a little nervous that right. New Year's Eve won't be right. Here's a photograph of Craig Robinson, probably, what, 2 o'clock in the morning? Uh, it was well after I left. Well after I left. Yeah. And he is dancing, the crowd's around him. We had so much fun. Mm -hmm. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, a very happy Craig Robinson dancing, having a blast. Yeah. And one of my favorite New Year's Eve of all time. And he's here February... The weekend of Super Bowl. 20, no. No, it's like 11, 12, yeah, 10, like 11, 12. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this or not, I'm going to try and get Craig to stay and hang with us on Super Bowl Sunday oh, here. Oh, that would be a good time. I, you know what I think he's going to do? I think he'll be in Vegas. Craig yeah. strikes me as a Vegas guy. All right, let me get to Cassie, get Cassie down. Cassie for a quick hello. A quick hello, and then i got to put her to bed. Listen, I hope you enjoyed our little trip down memory lane because it, it, I, I love, love doing the shots in the club and showing people everything we came from next week. I'm going to have some shots of me as a very young comic. I'm going to show you some of my earliest headshots and they are awful and they're really good to look at. I have a bunch of old, old headshots of a bunch of comics that I'm going to start showing you at these Tuesday night live. It's a long Tuesday night. I hope you hung in the whole time. I don't know because I can't see the comments, I'm going to just Google over here and see if I can't see any of you right now uh, on my other page. But we have Cassie coming down to say a quick hello because Todd Hartpence uh, always wants to see Cassie. Those of you who have been commenting, I apologize. Tomorrow or later tonight, I will answer your comments. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is a long one tonight. But you know what? Well worth doing. Well worth having fun with everybody. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, 60 comments I didn't get to. I apologize. I really do. Okay. Um, are we seeing, are we, we got Cassie coming yeah, to say hi? she's coming. She has a special message that she wants to say. Oh my God, here comes my partner in crime, Cassie Brand. Cassie's eating an apple right now. Okay, well, first of all, <laughs> I just wanted to say, so today, Phil, my wait, best don't friend. Don't take a bite, you're going to be talking yeah, in a second. Wait, so Phil texted me a picture. I wish I had the picture up. I... I wasn't home, but who was at her salon today? Mary. Mary Harpence was at Phil's salon today. They sent me a, a screenshot of them. Mary looked beautiful. And Okay, okay, hold on. So, Cassie, what do you have to say? What? 
She's got a mouthful of apple. You never. Why would you? Why would you? You, you really got to get your chops together. You can't take a bite right before you're about to talk. Yeah. Say hi to Todd and Mary. Hi, Todd and Mary Harpass. I love the pumpkin pudding. Oh yeah. my God. I so, absolutely loved it. Right. So you made a video. What I meant to send to them last week, but we just didn't get a chance. And so. Kathy, you haven't been on the podcast now for a couple weeks. Don't take another bite. Yeah. I've talked to you. Do you miss being on the podcast? I did. I, w I was just thinking to myself today when mom said, uh, I have to do on, join the podcast. And I'm like, is this becoming her podcast? Is she the new number two? <laughs> yeah. No, she's not. You are still number one. I'm number two. Yeah. Mom is yeah. number three. Yeah. No. Wait. You're number six. I'm she's, number six. She's right. number two. I'm number one. Okay, oh, my so God. You elevated your mother over me. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, listen, I really appreciate you hanging I'm out here on Tuesday nights. Thank all you star senders. I'm going to go into those 60 comments and check them out. And I really love doing these. Next week, you're going to see some amazing photographs from way back in my career. And we will see you then. Look for the Vicky and Vinny live, uh, uh, taped, recorded podcast up on this station very soon. Also, a new Vicky Vinny live show coming up soon. I'll be Thursday night in Bridgeport, and we will see you soon. Love to all. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. It's more like Vinny and Cassie. What's that? More like Vinny and Cassie.